So would lambda be bigger or smaller than 165 now? Bigger. It actually turns out that this absorbs at 217. So would the UV, would the UV vis spectroscopy be able to pick up this compound? Yes. yes, now it would be picking this up. Now we can see why did we wait until this chapter before we started studying UV spectroscopy? Because UV vis spectroscopy really only picks up conjugated systems. Because only conjugated systems are are going to be absorbing at a low enough energy to be in the ultraviolet or visible range. So this is the whole point of ultraviolet visible spectroscopy. It's a way of checking or detecting whether you have a conjugated molecule. We can think of UV vis spectroscopy as a way of detecting if the molecule is conjugated. So if you're told that something is absorbing in the ultraviolet or visible range, you should say, gee, it looks like this is conjugated. And also they might tell you the reverse. They might say, this molecule is not absorbing in the ultraviolet visible range. And then you probably you should say to yourself, it looks like this molecule is not conjugated. Obviously, if you could look at a picture of the molecule, you could just see whether it's conjugated. But in the lab, you can't see the picture, so you need a way of testing whether it's conjugated or not. Now, would this molecule absorb above 217 or below 217? This one should be even higher than 217 because this is even more conjugated. This is even more conjugated, so the energy should be going down even more. The wavelength should be going up even more. It turns out that the lambda here is 268. I don't think you'd be expected to have these memorized. But you, a good test question would be, you should be able to predict. If you're given one lambda, you should be able to predict whether the lambda of another compound would be higher or lower than that by checking whether it's more or less conjugated. So this would also be UV vis. So notice if something, uh, notice that we're still not in the visible range. So if the compound absorbs ultraviolet light, that indicates that it's conjugated. But if the compound absorbs visible light, that means that it's really conjugated. Because this is already quite conjugated, but it's still not that close to the visible light. So if we're absorbing visible light, we must be getting a, a very conjugated system. Would, would this kind of correlate that it, um, it takes a lower energy of activation when you use something like this in a reaction then, the more conjugated? because it's more stable? Let's see. I think uh, we'll have to talk about that, uh, those ideas in a second, but I think we should treat those as separate concepts. Okay. I don't think that we should really treat those as the same concept. These are two different things, but we'll, we'll talk about what you're getting at in a second. Okay. All right, so I guess we're just about done with all that I think you really need to know about UV spectroscopy. Okay. We've seen that, so you should know what we have on the board. More conjugated means you absorb lower energy photons. By the way, it's possible to explain why more conjugation gives you lower energy photons by using molecular orbitals. And your instructor actually spent a bunch of slides doing that. But um, I, I'm going to uh, take a guess that that's not going to be on the exam. So we won't go over using molecular orbitals to explain why more conjugation means that you absorb at lower energies. Uh, we'll just uh, memorize that fact. So what are the key facts you need to know about UV vis spectroscopy? One thing you should do is you should memorize these numbers. You should know what the range of numbers is okay. for UV vis. Uh, maybe you already know that visible light is from 400 to 700 nanometers, and now we should know that ultraviolet is from 200 to 400. It's very important to know that high frequency goes along with high energy, but low wavelength. What I have on the board here. We saw that with our flow chart. High frequency means high energy, but low wavelength. And again, the whole point of UV spectroscopy is if the compound does absorb ultraviolet or visible light, that tells us that it is conjugated. If it absorbs visible light, it's very conjugated. And if the compound does not absorb UV or visible light, if it does not absorb any light in this spectrum, then that is an indicator that it's not conjugated. That's the key use of UV spectroscopy. So you can see why, again, obviously you haven't covered UV vis spectroscopy until this point, because you haven't been studying conjugated systems.